So I just wanted to share what all I do in a day as a salon assistant. I graduated um, right during the middle of Corona and so there was a lot of limitations and honestly I was expecting to go straight from cosmetology school to working at a hair salon and I'm so glad that that wasn't even an option for me because I was not prepared like not at all cosmetology school I don't know about you know the Tony and guys cosmetology school but my cosmetology school did not prepare me for actual salon work you know and so being a salon assistant has honestly been the best thing that has ever happened to me and I am so blessed that I even got the opportunity and so I just wanted to share with y'all what all that entails in case you know maybe you're not ready to be a hairdresser maybe you feel uncomfortable maybe you feel like you could use more experience to be more confident in yourself and in, in your work if you know anything about cosmetology school once you graduate you have to take your written exam and your practical exam your written exam can be taken at a thousand hours but you have to wait until you have 1500 hours till you already graduated to take your practical so once i graduated um, i had already had my practical scheduled for like the week after i graduated you know i was prepared for everything but then corona hit and so everything was canceled no testing and we were just like shit out of luck like we didn't have anything to do and it wasn't going to be open until august and we were moving to san antonio you know that's three hours away from where i used to live i've been in san antonio for three months now but that was three hours from where we lived i knew no one i had no connections you know i was just moving there blindly and we i mean my husband's going to medical school and we needed i needed a job like period i needed a job i thought i was gonna have to work at walmart to provide a job which there's nothing wrong with working at walmart but like after i went to school for a year and you know got my i had my shit together i had everything planned i had been preparing and then it just like canceled but then i saw online that there was a salon right across the road from where i lived and that they were looking for receptionists salon assistants and everything like that and i was like well i don't have my license and so i don't know how many opportunities there will be for me at a salon if I'm not even licensed. And because a lot of times even receptionists have to have their license so that they can understand like how to book clients. Cause you know, they need to know how long it takes, you know, if you can fit a client in between while someone's processing. And so I emailed them and I didn't expect to hear anything back cause they're kind of like a higher sal in salon. And so I was like, you know, I'm fresh out of school, no license during a pandemic where everyone's kind of struggling. So I didn't expect to hear anything back, but then I got an email back asking me to come in for an interview. And so I went in and the owner interviewed me. Her name's Diane and she owns three salons in San Antonio. Uh, the D'Anthony salons, if you're from San Antonio and you've heard of them. Um, but she interviewed me and she said that she really needed an assistant and that she liked me and thank God she liked me because I'm really awkward in interviews, so I don't know how she liked me, but she did. And so um, I started the week after we moved here and I've been there ever since. We work five days a week and she rotates between all three salons. And her last assistant assisted her for about five months and it's been three months now for me. And once she feels like you're ready, she's seen your work, then she will put you on the floor and she'll hire a new assistant. And so I just wanted to like explain to y'all what I do as a salon assistant because I know like when I was graduating cosmetology, there's not really like a lot of paths that people talk about. Normally it's you graduate cosmetology and then bam, you're a hairdresser. But you know, there are actually a lot of alternate opportunities if you're looking or if you're not fully comfortable with being a hairdresser, because a lot of times like it's kind of scary to get out of cosmetology school and go straight to being a hairdresser because your name's attached to your work and say like, you mess up someone's hair and it's your first day it doesn't matter you know all people see is messed up hair and that's terrible but it's true and so um i just wanted to explain what i do as a salon assistant to see if it's something that you guys would like to look into if you're going through cosmetology school or if you're going about to graduate so as a salon assistant i show up 15 minutes before she gets there and I look at her schedule for the day. Usually we start at nine, um, but I look at her schedule for the day and then I print off her schedule. 
and she'll usually have about six people scheduled that day. I'll insert some clips. <laughs> about six people scheduled that day and then I will go through and I'll click on them if they're colors or highlights or balayages and we record um, formulas that we used so I will click on them look at their last um, visit and I put the date that they last visited and then I put the formula in there um, formula on the paper that was in the system so that she doesn't have to like reformulate um, but so I write all that down and then after I've done it for all of her clients, I go back and she has like a little spot that she prepares her color and everything. So I put the paper there so that she can see the formula and then I'll get out um, all what she'll need to mix. And so like, I'll get out her color, I'll get out her lightener, I'll get whisks, brush, um, the little color key, the bowl, foils if she needs them. <laughs> And then once her client comes in, I greet them, I take them back, I sit them down, I comb them out, and I part them into five sections if we're doing highlights, four sections if we're doing colors, and then I'll color block them so it doesn't stain them. I'll, um, we offer smocks to put over your clothes before you put the cape on, just in case color gets through the cape and you don't want your blouse ruined, which it is a higher end salon, and so a lot of the ladies do do that because, you know, they have expensive blouses, and so... We offer that and if you are a VIP member, which a VIP member means you pay like $4,000 at the beginning of the year and then all of the services you get are subtracted for that from that $4,000. So if you come in and get a color, then it'd be like $200 and you subtract that from $4,000 so that you don't have to pay every time you just walk out. And you also get VIP gift bags every four months. And it's like a ton of products, brushes, and all that stuff. But if you are a VIP member, then you do get a royal purple smock instead of black like we usually do. But anyways, I'll put a smock on them and then I'll cape them and everything and then offer them a beverage. We serve beer, wine, soft drinks, and of course water. And then once... Um, she's here she'll talk to them give them a little consultation i'll listen because she always, she's a big like um educator she wasn't a paul mitchell educator and so she loves it when i listen and i just you know you stand there and you just absorb because she's successful for a reason so i try to like really like li not even like listen to what she's saying but just how she do do does things the questions she asks you know what really makes a good consultation so that you know what your client wants so anyway, she'll go back and a lot of times she'll ask me, she'll be like, give me two ounces of their color and two ounces of DPL and 20 volume. So I'll go back and I'll mix it for her and then I bring it over to her station, I get her gloves and then she applies it and then I stand there. Sometimes I'll hand her foils if she's foiling just to make the process go by faster. And so then she'll mix it and she'll apply it and um, so once they're all applied and everything, I look at the time and I set a timer for however long, like if it's a color or if it's a color coverage of gray, then that's like 15 minutes longer than just a normal color. If it's highlights, then she'll give me like a rough time based on like their hair texture. She'll be like, let me check them in 20 minutes or let me check them in 30 minutes so that she doesn't have to be watching the clock, it's my job. And then she usually double or triple books herself. And so by the time she's finished applying, her next client's already here. So I already have them sat, caped, and parted. And I have their color sitting out ready for her to mix. And so then once the time is up, um, if it's color, then I just take them directly back to the shampoo room. But if it's lightener, then I do... Um, I say like, oh, their 20 minutes is up. Would you like to check them? And she is like, yes. And usually she's doing another client. And so I just pull open a foil so that she can see what it looks like. And she'll be like, okay, they're ready to go. Um, and she tells me like, give them one wash. I want to tone them or just shampoo them. They're fine. Use purple shampoo to tone them a little bit if they're really blonde. And so 
I shampoo them and I get them everything and at first that was like frightening to me because like she's really like you know she's on a schedule and so you have to be number one you have to be fast with your shampoos which I'm still not that fast but I've gotten better but also if you take them back and they have like color then she you have to go back and you have to shampoo them again or it worst of all she'll be like i can do it don't even worry about it and it's like so like i'm like oh at first that happened to me once but never again because i almost cried and she was like don't worry about it i got it and like you could tell that she was disappointed but um so i get all their color off i make sure you know i'm like getting my hands under there getting all their color off and then you dry them you put a towel around their head and tell them to go back to the station and then you comb them out and you take color remover, get any of the color that they've left, that was left on them or that stained them. Then I comb them out because a lot of times, you know, if you're blonding or if you have long hair, then it is harder to comb them out. So I comb them out so that she doesn't have to waste time doing that. And then I get her scissors out or I get her shears out and I get her comb out and I set everything up on her little station so that all she has to do is just pick up the scissors and start cutting. And so either I style them or they style, or she styles them or I'll dry them and then she'll come over with like an iron and um, touch up stuff. And then after that, I take them to the front and the receptionist checks them out and we pre-book. Usually her clients will pre-book because she's booked for about two months out. And so normally they'll pre-book for a couple of times so that they don't have to worry about getting in with her when they need to. And I wipe down her station because of Corona, you know, we have to wipe down between every single client. And I just make sure her clients are happy and comfortable. You know, a lot of those clients really appreciate you checking up on them because you, they are at a higher end salon. And so they expect you to be like, you know, oh, are you okay? Are you all right? And everything like that so I just really try to make them feel like I'm there for them if they need something and on the days that she is off or on the days that she is less busy she'll say like if you want you can book someone for a balayage if you want you can book someone for a highlights you know she lets me do my own work on days that she can spare not having someone there and so I've done three balayages I've done a haircut I've done two colors you know and it's just so that she can see my work and that builds her confidence in me so that she'll be more confident when she puts me on the floor and not have to worry like oh my god are they gonna complain oh my god is she okay <laughs> So I decided to go to the La Cantera shopping center because it's right across the street from where I live. And right now I'm at Ross. I might stop at um, TJ Maxx and like Old Navy because they're all right by each other. Depends on if I find anything because every time I go to Ross, I can never find cute stuff. But then I see everyone going to Ross and I'm like, oh, that's so cute. Where'd you get it? And they're like, oh, from Ross. But when I go there, it's like barren. So... Hopefully I can find something. I'll let y'all know. So I just got done shopping. I ended up going to Ross and TJ Maxx. And from Ross, I just got two things. Um, I got this t-shirt. It's kind of like more casual wear. But that's what it looks like. And then the back is really cute. Um, at my work, you have to wear black, white, or beige. It has to be, like, some kind of neutral. So, I don't really mind, though. Like, there's a lot of things you can do with black, white, and beige that look super classy and cute. And then I got this cardigan. And it's just, like, lace. Which, I have a red one. But, like, nothing matches red. Like, especially for work. So, I got a white one. And then from Home Goods, I mean TJ Maxx, it's like the same store though, they're like connected. I got these cute shoes. I have the Steve Madden ones, but I always worry about wearing them to work because like I don't want to drop color on them. So I got um, some little rip off ones in black. And so those are super cute and those would be really convenient to just like throw on which I have like some other shoes for work that are like super like um they're like the orthopedic shoes I don't know if that's what you call them 
but those things are kind of ugly i mean they're comfortable and they don't make my feet hurt like these probably will make my feet hurt but if there's ever like a day that i'm really wanting to feel cute and don't want to wear my orthopedic shoes then that's a good option and then i got this and this is a little more skimpy but i got that and it's just like a little tank top which i was gonna pair that with the lace cardigan because i'll never wear just like a tank top like this to work that's weird well for me because i i hate my arms but it's fine and then i saw this long sleeve shirt and it's not really a beige but i bet i'll i can wear it at work i'll have to ask but it's just like a long sleeve turtleneck since fall is coming and it's if you look close, it's leopard print, and it's really cute. I know that leopard print's kind of, like, going out of style now, but I still love it, so don't judge. But, yeah, that's what I ended up getting. I'm really happy. I actually feel like I found a lot. Daily reminder to not be a Karen and to wear your mask.